I'm Kadambri Ragukumar, and I've called Aotearoa New Zealand home for about 15 years now. One of the many things that I love about this place is the thriving art scene. But in 2021, I want to get to know more artists who represent people like myself. When colors are mixed together and when it's placed on, on the surface, how it creates whole new time is quite a mesmerizing moment that I'm constantly feeling it. Driving or walking along Auckland streets, it's almost impossible to miss Sing Yul Oh's iconic, colorful public art. It's a city he's called home as long as I have. I came here in 97, I was 15. I got here by myself. I had an idea of what New Zealand is from books and TV. I thought I would be living up on the hill like uh, with many sheep and animals. And behind there is ski field or like that I can go for snowboarding. And then um, there is, of course, like a New York-like big city <laughs> right outside. It wasn't anything like that at all. <laughs> I suppose that's what I wanted to do, just like go to a new, total new place and don't know where, where I am. Certain point I wanted to spend more time uh, back in Korea to really just disappear kind of, amongst other Koreans. I'm a foreigner here, but when I'm there, I'm a, one of them, you know. But then I was a foreigner when I went back. I felt really quite an interesting moment that you have changed. I wanted to explore those feelings and those perspectives being here and there and back and forth. I really like collection of those moments, like nature, how it's changing and you can't expect. You don't know what you will be confronting. So I love those moments, observing what it does to me and why. I do video, photo, uh, sculpture, painting, prints, just anything really, I mean. <laughs> I feel most delightful when I'm painting. Compositions, color, texture, you can't stop exploring, I mean. Also, of course, sculptures, because sculpture is quite physical, which I really love too. Like me, he's no fan of stereotypes, but it's poking fun at them that his installation, Ondo, did so well. The unmissable piece lived a long life on Dominion Road until last year. I got invited to come up with an idea in the context of roadworks in a public space with all the orange barriers and cranes and diggers and cables and pipes and everything. So the guts of the road will be revealed. And I wanted to have an action of revealing the underground works, but in a humorous way of uh, lifting this cable-like noodles <laughs> uh, off the ground by chopstick. At the time I was making very hyper-realistic noodle sculpture series and that was from that idea that got expanded to that scale. But the construction plan got cancelled and it became its own uh, life of floating around Dominion Road. <laughs> I don't intentionally try to extract out my cultural identity or my background. I let itself come out without direct intention. I suppose it's something that's a way of reflecting myself, but my practice isn't just that. I'm thinking of broad public, what we can experience that everyone has in common. Sing Yul's inspired by forms he finds in nature, and he spends a lot of time working physically with material. But I guess the reality of time spent in front of a screen is unavoidable. I think this sort of back-end work that you do, the, you know, the prep work and the research work, when you sort of walk out onto the street and see your um, installation, it's hard to kind of put those two together because it's hard to imagine that you're actually sitting behind a computer screen creating all of this. And That's then, right, yeah. You know, what you see is just a physical object, really. Mm. All these ideas actually come from um, simple pencil drawing to start with, or me just cutting some papers 
and developing a certain idea and then refining it through um, doing it in three-dimensional uh, 3D uh, program. Um, so it, it became more detailed and actually understand the physicality of the work and be able to walk around it basically with your eyes. It will be quite hard to understand uh, until I actually see it, confronting it. So that's a fun part of it. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it just quite feels exciting. like such a whole other world with mm. you behind a computer. But you know, that's right. What yeah. I know of you is working with material physically and mm. painting and yeah. making things. But this is another aspect to your work, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I really get interested in people losing their context that they are in a gallery space. I love when people totally get lost in my work. I mean, some people do, like really screaming and running around and they forget about it, you know. Even just viewing without physical interaction, it is to give an opportunity for them to confronting something that is present. What they are looking at isn't what they've seen before, that is different way of looking or feeling from it. Singul avoids over-articulating his work and prefers to leave room for more playful interpretations. That's something I can relate to. I'm quite open to challenge new ways of experiencing and also producing works. I try to find what ways of expressing the idea is most suitable. Experimenting with materials that leads to new ideas, so it's working both ways. It's finding something treasure that really amazes you or that you connect to, and it's it's like um, exploring new places as you go, and you know it's inspiring. I was born in Japan. My family is quite small, and because we've been separated from my mom's side of the family ever since moving to New Zealand, it's always been a nice way to reconnect with them through my work. This is art that's quirky and tactile. The first time I saw Claudia's work, I was pretty amused and tempted to touch. The way that I make art just, it came about from failing at every other style. I was enrolled in an oil painting class and I just couldn't use the oils. And then as soon as I finished with that class, I just decided, okay, I'm obviously not cut out for oil painting, so I'll try acrylics. And that's, I suppose, where I discovered house paint, which is, yeah, the paint that I'll never stop using. Generally, with any sort of making of my practice, it follows what's happening in my current with relationships with family or relationships with people around me or my own difficulties at the time. So thematically, there's no real separation. It's just really to do with the medium that I'm feeling most drawn to at the time. I got into making the rugs. Um, it would have been during the lockdown, the first lockdown that we went through last year. I was really lucky to have actually already had started to look for other mediums to explore in, um, and rugs was something that I came across online. There's definitely differences that I've had to have learnt with rug making. Um, it's a lot more time consuming, and obviously the process is much harder on my body physically. Well, the gun itself weighs around three kgs, so it's quite heavy. Um, and if you're working 60 plus hours on a rug for an exhibition, um, yeah, by the end of the month, your, your right arm is definitely physically larger and more swollen <laughs> and in more pain. Whereas painting, I find it's much more enjoyable and relaxing. I can see myself making rugs in the future again, but it's definitely something that I need to build my energy up for. My parents met in Japan. My dad is Kiwi and my mom, she was born and raised in Hoi, so they kind of just met in Japan, which is funny because like, heritage-wise, um, I'm Japanese on my mom's side, but all of my family are in Hoi. 
before COVID, I was visiting my grandparents once or twice a year. Um, I've got cousins over there and extended family. I also studied at the University of Hawaii for one year between 2015 and 2016, so it's a really special place. Claudia's grandmother, or Obachan in Japanese, is omnipresent in each of these works, and she's equally present in her everyday life. Yeah, so here she's just cooking kalbi, which yeah. is like Korean barbecue short ribs, just You've a small part done of her well routine. With her, with her sweater, with her Yeah, jumper. with her top, but you see her board spot. I was like, I have to include that. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> it's such an element to her. What does she think of it when she when you showed her photos of all of this? Um, I mean, yeah, no, she <laughs> she she loves them, but I think she might feel a little bit exposed in her pajamas and her <laughs> hair rollers. But I mean, but it's really know, not it's that still bad slightly at all. Yeah, it's kind of comical, but it's also, <laughs> it could be anybody, right? Exactly. It could be any, could anyone's bachan. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I speak to my bachan nearly every day. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing today? Nothing much. I would say she's definitely one of my best friends, I suppose because I have that regular contact with her. I feel like she's still very much involved in my life. How is the kitchen Stop. looking? Is it looking good? No. <laughs> oh, you want to see? Okay. You remember how to do it, yeah? you got to do it in the corner. Yeah, I'm clicking the arrows, but it won't go yet. <laughs> oh, shucks. Wow, it looks so nice. Oh, nice. I like the handles. Yeah, $13 each. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's expensive. Okay, you go do your work now. Okay. Love you. Bye. bye, -bye. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. Yeah, love you. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Oi, I didn't turn you off. Are you off? No, I'm still here. Oh, shocked. I'm trying to. You Do you want me to hang up? Yeah, you hang up. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> Claudia's rapidly rising in the art world, but her sentiment around not wanting to be pigeonholed as an Asian artist is something that resonates. Her themes, after all, are universal. It's very easy to be tokenized as like a, a, a person of color, especially in the art world. Like you're, you're that. Asian artist or, you know, it goes on and on. If I'm making work about my grandparents, you know, there'll be little signs in the work that signify our heritage. I don't forget my identity at all, but within the work, that's what I think I'm going to try and stay away from, the identity politics. I'm going to need to try and, for myself, I'd like to kind of steer away from that. For some artists, it could be a really, you know, strong and powerful part of their work, and that is noble in itself as well. But with my work, the topic isn't so meaningful. It really isn't, to be frank. I mean, it's just mother and daughter playing tennis, or, you know, or someone gardening. You know, the, the, the sort of themes, they're of the everyday. I feel like I maybe don't need to go into so much specificities within the work. I always encourage people to touch the paintings or touch the rugs. People obviously want to touch the rugs more, but um, I feel like the house paint makes the work durable enough for you to go and touch the paintings as well. It makes the work more accessible. I think it's unnecessary to treat these pieces of artwork as something that is so precious. So I guess I, I like to make work that doesn't need that sort of notoriety, I suppose. There's really a healing. Every time you touch the soil, interacting with that soil just feels right. So what's my task for the day? I first met Charles at the end of summer a couple of years ago when he was digging up the remnants of his garden. His art and aesthetic immediately struck me as edgy, conscious and conceptual. 
It didn't take long for us to become friends, and I wanted to know more about his radical change in perspective after he arrived in New Zealand from the Philippines. We were still based in Manila. This dense city vibe, where there's always the slum area, and just surrounded by all these buildings and all this traffic and all this mall. We used to be surrounded by a lot of trees in front of our house, and those trees, according to my parents and my grandparents, uh, they were planted by our ancestors there, like great great grandparents and. Development came and our people, we were fighting against it because those trees, uh, that's where the community congregates and hang out and we have that connection with those trees and they get chopped down and then development, more houses. But there is always this longing to get back into nature. Then we first came here, we see that, oh man, they have this pristine nature. 100% nature and everything was advertised as uh, so this is an egalitarian society, you know, um, that shaped our minds of why we want to come here. And then it was the opposite of what we've seen from the advertising, because when we got here, that's when oh, we've seen the reality of what this country really is, because people who used to be inhabiting this land, who were free, they're oppressed and lost. They're not really living what 100% pure New Zealand nature is. <laughs> yeah, but um, that was an eye-opening that there's something going on here. Charles got involved as a photographer and writer with a magazine called Stone Soup, which is all about food philosophy. With that, he found himself digging up his own backyard. What started out as an urban gardening project as a way for him and his wife to drop roots in New Zealand is now an ongoing community arts project. It was in this warm and communal space that the seeds for open homes were sown. Gardening is an extension of the art practice these days. Uh, Papa Tuanuku is the ultimate art and we are constantly evolving with her and co-creating with her and collaborating with her. That was the start of the Open Homes Project. When I started putting those seedlings outside our homes during lockdown, level two, FAO, Arts Local Trust, they seen, you know, um, the potential of what we're doing here. They decided that they should fund us a community garden it's really good for promoting, you know, the cow pop up growing food in your backyards and food sovereignty and mitigating climate change. It just happens organically the way I interacted with them because I was just being friendly and being generous. Getting to know them, hearing their stories from their own perspective, what New Zealand is like. Yeah, and I think that's what binds us together into this project and they want to work with the land as well, they want to do some planting. And they've seen it also as a living dynamic artwork. It interacts and it bleeds. Papa Tuanuku, every time you scratch the land, it bleeds, it cries. You know, making all these connections and it's making this land healthy. I just truly believe that you know, healthy land equates to healthy people. I don't know, this feeling is just too important. I know people these days, they ignore those feelings. But think about it, how your ancestors were before modernity took place. Everything was just guided through our feelings. You know what I mean? Like, everything's just intuitive. So whom do these little envelopes go to? Is this part of your open you, homes um, koha that you put outside yeah. on your... Whoever wants to grow their own sunflowers or whatever seeds that we have. Gardening is a process and nature is a process. We just need to mirror that. So we can have like um, a sustainable human ecology and convivial economy. 
Uh, I'm using the jargons now. <laughs> Part of the light. You know, I never thought of growing food as an art. Meeting Charles, I now realise why mixed media artists like him are crucial to the arts ecosystem. He's grafting the practice of gardening with conscious art. And I think we all need more of that. The idea the art inside the galleries these days are just getting too redundant and price up really high and then it's just going to end up into rich people's houses as property and it's not really you know promoting all these good values you want to be doing the opposite of the artists we have the skills and the eye that is needed right now and since we're good storytellers through pictures videos or whatever if you happen to have the skills the type of skills that can empower other people might as well use that i think open homes is turning into the agency for creative people like us who are in the same type of journey.